Hello my friends and welcome back to another Brood War Ladder Battle. We're going to be taking a little dive into a big series here between Hero, spawning in the bottom left, and Light over here in the center right. Looking forward to this series. Guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see Brood War live forever, hit that like button as well. This should be a fun one, guys. Apocalypse is our map, and Hero has been absolutely crushing it lately. Such a big fan of his Zerg play. Excited to see what kind of strategies he's going to bring out here to take down Light on Apocalypse. Now, of course, Light is a very scary player. He's had a lot of recent success in KCM and other places as well hasn't been the ASL finalist material for a little bit but he still has the respect of most Korean pros he's like kind of the replacement for Flash while Flash has been away now that Flash is back we'll see what kind of position he finds himself in it's hard to replace Flash that's for sure. Big shoes to fill. So maybe he'll be happy uh, not to have that, you know, leader of Terran um, moniker or extra pressure on his shoulders. Instead, you know, Flash being what it is, Flash coming back here, maybe Light can just take, you know, his own position here. Can take his own uh, spot among many greats rather than you know the greatest i don't think that uh light or anybody can handle that kind of pressure for long aside from flash we've got the one rax expansion coming here for light what's well, the 12 hatchery for heroes so everything opening up very nice and normal they had this scout over at the natural he sees everything same thing going here for light so just standard opening things uh, in ZVT so far. Nothing crazy or out of the ordinary at this point. Second Rax coming down. It's going to be a two Rax pressure, no doubt. First Marine comes across the map here. And does try to force the drones off the line. Doesn't seem like he's going to get anything for that. And sends the Marine back home. Pretty typical standard stuff all around thus far second marine heading back and no kills on any of this i don't think i missed anything just a little brief poke into the front of the natural before lings come out but now that there's four lings here the three marines can fight that but it's not a great trade if you start losing marines this early on you're not going to feel, be feeling too good about your position. So I like that Light is pulling back here. Just going to wait around in the natural. Has two chokes. Right here and right here. It has to keep both of those areas plugged. But oh, the SCV as speed finishes up. That will end up getting taken down. But he's got some good information. He's no third hatchery, and you can see that there's not too many lings out just yet. Here comes that pressure. Fire bat and one medic. Okay, interesting. Expecting that there might be an extra amount of lings produced here on the side of hero. Not really the case. Second fire bat gonna pop into the natural and these lings will have to retreat. Three fire bats were made though. Two sunkens. Halfway done. S slightly late though. Will he be able to break through the front? The stim button now. Oh, stim's not done. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of lings coming out here. There's the stim finally coming through. There's some interesting footsies going on right at that last moment. But Hero will hold. 
did produce a few extra lings. Only one marine died. These two firebats are going to branch out. Try to find this third base as the mutilists start to get built here. Only three able to be produced immediately. Uh, some of the larva was used on those lings, so a pretty big win, I would say, for light already in this early game. Forcing the extra links and slowing down that mutilus timing. He will have plenty of turrets up in time here. Comps hat on the way. Ling spread out. But this is such a small commitment to Mutilus. Is he going to continue to build? Yeah, he does start plus one as well. You can just see how little Hero is actually able to do with this. He's only tracking the Marines right now and hoping that he can bait out a stim or two. There we go. Baits the first stim. Has five Mutus at this point. One fire bat gets taken down. But I think this is now visible to light. He's seen the creep at the edge of the, the fire bat's vision. The fire bat is going to come in towards this third. There's only one ling to block it. It's definitely going to get in there. Doesn't have a lot of HP left anymore. We'll send just one Muta to deal with this. Pretty good choice from Hero. We need to finish that off. There we go. He gets that and he'll bring everything back together. Ooh, losing one Muta already. Hasn't taken many pot shots at these Marines at all thus far. The Mutalist number is continuing to grow though. We have Hydralis Den on the way. Just two barracks, three barracks in fact, with a factory finishing up now. And this attack coming in towards the third. This is very scary. That's a lot of Mutas, but it's going to be hard to take on this many Marines right now. Getting a good angle here from the top of the ramp, but starting to lose some Mutas. Already two have been lost. Diving in once again. Who wants to dive on top of the Marines? There's light. Maybe splitting off a few to go kill uh, the drones would be a good idea, but instead... Gonna stand here and fight, try to kill as many mutas as he can. He did a pretty good job of cleaning up some of these mutt mutts, but in the end, they're gonna take the fight. And with the hive getting started already, we're on track as hero with a good number of drones. Already 31, and no pressure on the map means that he can drone up pretty hard. While harassing this next move out of bio. Of course, vessels are not too far off. But there's no need to continue to build mutas at this point. We'll just use the ones that we've already purchased. To harass and slow down this bio. And get those lurkers out as soon as possible. Lurkers will hold these choke points. And a hero should be able to get into Hive with a good 3 gas and a decent economy behind it. That Hive just about done already and still not able to move out here is Light. Taking some trades with the Marines and Mutas. But he needs to wait for Vessels or Valkyries is going to be the choice. Ooh. I don't think I like this now for Light. Going for Valkyries. When there's no further commitment to Mutas from Hero. Hero is building Hydralis. He's getting into a bunch of Lurkers. And this Valkyrie timing when it comes out. It's going to be able to push away the Mutas. But it's not going to give an opening here for Light. We're going to see uh, Lurkers at, in this position in just a moment's time. Mutas are being pushed back. That's quite a bit of damage. But this is this is it. This is the, the one moment that these Valkyries buy you. And he's building into four Valkyries. You need to be able to move out, push away the Mutas, and then uh, kill one of these bases. Or at least put a huge amount of pressure onto one of these bases. But Lurkers are already here. 
four lurkers over at this base means you're not going to break through and since there's no vessels we're not going to be able to start irradiating all of this stuff and the mutas can just sit back at home make sure that no drops can swing in has a lot of scourge ready to fight just in case there was a drop with some valkyries to try and hit the main but sunken colony here four lurkers Two lurkers, two sunken colonies. It's looking really, really clean here from Hero. Maybe we can see these uh, overlords get picked off and then a target onto the, the two lurkers. But there is a Nidus Canal, of course. Oof, just one Valkyrie goes down in that fight. More overlords are going to get killed, but there's still open supply right now for Hero. He's not at risk of getting supply blocked just yet. Three Valkyries, still really significant. Uh, Anti-air damage, tough to get on top of them with some Scourge. Consume is just about to finish though. There's no opening here for Light to get in and break this base. Light almost lose that Valkyrie. Really, really close. Just barely manages to keep that alive, but... All this posturing in the front, the play with the Valkyries, none of that is going to matter much. Because there's no progress to be made here with already Defilers, Consume, and Lurkers in place ready to fight. Light making a turn. Sharp angle over here towards this third base. He has Irradiate. He has the energy for that as well, but... To be able to just consume a drone and drop a dark swarm and that will be the end of this aggression at least for now a few more science vessels on the way we've got plus one one finished which armor do we have we've already got one armor done and one uh, plus two armors on the way so this is looking very scary honestly we're not much ahead with the plus two attack over the carapace upgrade here is Terran the uh, third base gonna come down fourth base as well double expansion gonna be the answer here for light he wants to ramp up this production really really heavily even getting a factory out here in the front I'd love to see a second factory as well as more gases get added on can definitely afford to add some more facts Ooh, great first plague here that plague hitting the majority of the marines and one of the vessels as well trading just a couple of decent irradiates for a huge plague on the majority of the forces that is a fantastic trade for hero and a fourth base will start with lurkers out here in the front and a defiler with full energy it's not a lot of recourse at the moment right now for light he doesn't have any drops or anything he is adding on two more factories where are they there they are that's what i like to see it's likely to be oh ultra upgrades are coming i thought we were gonna see hydralis defiler but um ultra Hey, tanks still work pretty well against that. Maybe even mines you could go into. Ooh, both of these get taken out. A third vessel might end up going down as well. A lot of lings fell there. Pretty well for free. One uh, lurker over here, but a, a defiler has been hidden on this side. More and more lings popping out now. Do we even have speed yet? Feels like they're slow. Okay, they do have speed now for sure. Um, have crack as well crackling upgrade is done Ooh, a lot of these links just going to the wayside right now but hero is building up and he's got this fourth hatch just about done this fourth base almost ready at this point plus two attack is done plus two armor is done as well so even on uh, armor to attack upgrades always a good situation for the zerg player running forward here trying to snipe a defiler not quite able to get it though doesn't have energy upgrade the metasynaptic nodes so that will end up getting taken down before casting any additional spells um no no plague i mean 
But here are the Ultras. Now, plus four armor. That's a lot of Ultras coming out onto the field. Can he get a big surround on this Bio Force? There's certainly not enough of it to take on this many Ultras. And Ling's making their way up here. They're not going to make much progress. But this explosion of Ultralis coming out, he needs a bunch of tanks to start to deal with this. He's got three tanks. That is it. Vessels are going to start to fall. Ultras here getting pushed back by Radiates. Some tanks setting up. But already, light severely on the back foot here. He's having a tough time putting any pressure on Hero, who is just getting into his fourth gas now. And spreading out more on the map. He's reserving these, or preserving these Ultras. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate, getting these both irradiated. He'd like to take the fight now. Now that these have been irradiated, he might as well go in with this. I pick off another vessel here. Good job comboing the Ultralisk attack with the Scourge to make sure he can get some damage onto these vessel. this vessel count. Three tanks at a time. No vessels in production. Just double upgrade and triple tank. But, uh, Hero, he's just got so much money. Is this tank play going to be enough? I would love to see mines as well. I really feel like mines are one of the best counters to Ultra in this matchup. You throw down a bunch of mines and the Zerg starts to walk into them. Holy, does it get efficient. He's going to find some Ultras over here. A couple of Irradiates go down to finish off that Defiler and deal some damage to the remaining Ultras. Another group of Marine Medic moving around, or another group of uh, Ultra Scourge moving around. The Valkyries looks like they're just going to be sent in to die right now. Going after a bunch of Overlords, but with uh, good targeting, good splitting, I think that the Mutas and Scourge should be able to deal with this no problem. Yeah, he does deal with that. Finally, a big move out here coming from Light. And moving down towards this fourth base. Let's see if we can crack this open. Because we do have a group of Ultra moving around the top side. Let's see what's back at home ready and waiting. Oh, there's just way too much. Oh my goodness. This is so much from Hero. Hero has so many Ultras right now. He, he brings everything together to try and crush this. I thought he was going to go for the kill on this base. Because he did have the Defiler up there. But instead of going up towards that 12 o'clock, he brings everything back to deal with this attack. And although he did clean it up pretty well, we're four base to four base. And feeding Ultralis into tank. Not the greatest move from Hero, but killing off a few tanks here and there. As long as you're limiting the tank count, it's sometimes considered worth it. It just depends on the economic position you've got. And... Honestly, economic position looking pretty hot right now for Hero 7, 175 supply. There's a dropship finally going out on the map. But typically, drops are not that worthwhile after Ultralists are out. Because one single Ultralist can kill anything that the Terran can drop in a drop. Coming in from multiple angles right here. Have the, the Defiler ready. Ultra is hitting the Marine Medic, just clearing everything out so easily. As soon as he falls back to the tanks, he decides it's probably better to leave that B. This base looks like it's about to go down. Looks, seems like he was just not paying attention to that. Finally, will get in with some Mutas and Lings to clear this out. So this is pretty good. Getting that cleared and keeping the hatchery alive might be a good idea to build another hatch here. Uh, immediately after just to make sure that if this base goes down you can at least mine the gas we build this creep colony instead two ultras down here no defiler to help out so this could get cleared and this base could be taken down um scourge catching up with some vessels in the middle of the map not a lot of vessels have been made recently he did restart that production but the vessel count looking very low after losing so many in this game. 
Still a great count of tanks up here on this plateau. Tanks blocking this base. Maybe he'll try and take the base at that bottom right area. Plague coming down on this could be huge. That's so many marines and medics all clumped up in that little tiny space. That fifth gas about to come online. Hero playing it very slow right now. Staying back. Looking for opportunities to snipe vessels. Vessel count has grown once again, and the tank count is getting quite scary. 200 supply on either side at this this point in the game. A big counterattack moving northward, but the Defiler gets irradiated, so we won't see... Oh, but... gosh, that's, that's not good. The Ultra's getting uh, sent over here, only picking off two tanks, and this base not going to be taken down. Um, this is such a scary amount of tanks right now. There's so many Marines and Medics back at home as well. He needs to pull everything together and hold this high ground. If he holds this plateau here, it's going to get so difficult for Hero to take that area back. Big force moving here on top of these tanks, but the Ultra's just getting splattered. Not a whole lot they can do against that number of tanks. We have some mutas over here, but this amount of bio plus all of these irradiates, it's not going to be easy to break this no matter if you go fight from the air or from the ground. These mutas could dive on top of this. Well, it seems like he's just going to run for it. Maybe losing the fifth base. Yeah, that fifth base. Only 44 HP. It does go down super, super fast. And Vessel's coming forward. He's looking for anything to irradiate. Just goes for the Scourge, of all things. And a counterattack coming up right now for, from Hero. He's going to dive on top of these tanks. Maybe take out this base down in bottom right. And all the SCVs associated with that. So a big chunk of the economy is about to be lost for light. But at the same time, this base is exposed. So many tanks on high ground up here. How do you ever break out of this with Ultra and Link? I doubt you'll even get up this ramp, to be honest, because there's just so much DPS coming down from all of these tanks, even under Dark Swarm. The splash is going to be deadly. Big plague on a lot of these tanks. Forcing some of this back. He is going to get a few vessels as well. Not bad moves by Hero, but he's dropped deeply in supply to just 139. Marines are starting to push forward. The tanks on high ground are killing everything under the Dark Swarm. The point where this spell doesn't even seem to matter. Here we go. He's going to consume a couple more units. We throw down a plague or a dark swarm on top of this. Going for the hatchery though, he snipes the hatch. And Hero is on the ropes. Can't really break up onto this plateau, just sending in Lings and Ultras to their doom. Not many. You know what? I don't see many Marines with this. Where are all the Marines right now? These few leftover mutas are gonna get an insane number of kills. On this left hand side killing off a ton of these tanks so we will bring forward some vessels to deal with that but this was insanely valuable the kills right here he should go for the low hp tanks too this this tank right here is so low oh one hp on that that is frustrating this base trying to get taken again tanks are going to retake this spot not a huge amount of marines right now, but still 164 supplies looking very good. Another base coming up in the bottom center. Hydralis then will be lost as well as the Nidus in that position. Where can Hero go from this spot? Trying to push up the middle, throwing down dark swarms and Ling's trying to jump on top of everything, but Firebats with the D-Matrix holding the line. 
can't make much progress against that and we're past the 25 minute mark so uh, almost all the gases are depleted at this point this one's not even mining with three drones that's so painful battle cruisers coming in to finish the job and gg is called hero gets taken down i was not expecting this result guys the double expansion from light and into triple factory tank it turned out really, really well. Plus three is also done there. So this this went better than expected. I thought that Hero was going to dominate when he got his third base up so quickly. And that fourth gas came online. His ultra count was looking very, very good. He had opportunities to counterattack 12 o'clock. But I think he kind of missed out on them. And allowed this tank count to get too high without having a direct counter. It, it becomes super problematic. Also, trying to shove so much stuff up this one tiny little ramp. Don't we need to spread out and take a larger engagement so we can get on top of all this stuff? really feels bad to try and shove uh, ultras and lings up that tiny ramp with all those tanks just sitting on top of the high ground. Pretty rough game here from Hero, but we'll see if he can bring it back. Coming up, game number two. Great plays here from Light. Very well done, game number one. I thought we were going to see quite a different game. I thought we were going into more of a Hydralis Defiler play from Hero. But the tanks in that situation, I mean, they, they cover both options as a Zerg player. If they want to go Hydra Defiler, if they want to go Ultra, having that mass tank not a bad option in either case and although he didn't get any damage true damage onto hero in the early game he didn't really punish him uh, especially with that valkyrie transition it didn't seem to do anything uh, somehow light able to take that game it's it's generally understood that if you're not able to do anything to the zerg player early on and they're able to just play their game and build their drones and not worry about taking damage from you then you're going to be in a tough spot when four gas comes online and ultra start to hit the field but light showing us that it's possible to take on a professional zerg player that hasn't been fully harassed by just double expanding and mecking out with a marine tank and this time he's gonna throw down an eight racks in the middle of the map we're on blitz y in game number two follow up refinery here on the way for light but a nine pool Ooh, this is not looking good nine pool from hero this barracks will do next to nothing and light is about to find out about that fact he sees the hatchery just going down now and he knows he is in a ton of trouble six slings pop out they're gonna head straight across the map marines are just out and about is he gonna try and counterattack this where are we gonna build our factory factory is over here so he's hoping that he can fight with the fight against the links with the scvs or just run around them and the factory won't be found and a vulture can pop out and save him from the links but in the meantime he's going to send these marines into the main uh or actually just over here to the bunker get in the bunker and try his best to deal some damage uh, at that natural meanwhile here we go he is going to fight with the scvs on the marines three four five scvs going down okay this is way too much damage he tried, but this is this is way too much damage. Even if we kill the hatchery, with only like five SCVs left, he's going after the low HP once he gets another one. He gets another one. This is getting so bad. This is getting so bad for light. Only four remain. Can even build a vulture. Yes, another one goes down. Great control here by Hero and. Yes, this will fall. Yes, he's probably going to lose that natural, but 
Nufflings are up here on the high ground that light can't really counterattack him. And as long as he finishes this sunken colony, yeah, nothing's going to really go through. We should see a Spire and a pretty straightforward win from Hero at this point. There it is. GG. Light knows it. He taps out. We're going to jump into game number three. Well, Hero really had Light's number in that last game. He knew exactly what was coming. Countered it perfectly. It's tough to get a win from that type of position, but I think Light made some good moves. I think going in and hiding the Marines and then just going for a bunker on the other side of the map is it's a pretty reasonable decision to make. Maybe instead of fighting with the SCVs, he could have ran. Ran with the SCVs and waited for the Vulture to come out. You know, you lose a lot of mining time, but it's not like there's link speed yet or anything. So maybe he could have kept the SCVs alive. Like, you can't, you can't just run down the SCVs. You have to... You have to get on top of them. And without the speed, it's, it's not uh, really doable to kill all the SCVs if they're just going to run. And then once you get the vulture out, you can clear all the, the the lings and then go back to work with the SCVs. I don't know. Not a Terran player, but the thought did occur to me. Hero, after taking that quick win with the 9 pool, I'm going to switch it back into a 12 hatch here. So, one more drone. There it is. One more drone. Hatchery on the way. Fully confident that Light will not 8 racks him again. Sending out a drone to go on a scouting mission. Try to find out what's coming from Light. In this third game of the series. Nothing out of the order. Oh, wait a second. Command center first. Hey, there we go. Light taking a page out of the book of Flash. Going for that command center first. Wasn't very popular until Flash came back to the ladder and started using it all over the place. Now it's becoming quite fashionable to get this quick CC. And you can, you can tell why. It gives you such a big advantage if you can pull it off. It's a uh, honestly a better way or a more solid way to um, combat the hatchery on 12, 12 hatchery play. You can just die, of course, to a 9 pool, but you can also die to a 9 pool as we saw in the last game with 8 racks, right? 8 racks meta became really popular for a while, but... It is vulnerable to the early pool builds, just like this build. Uh, but this build gives you a much stronger position without having to deal any early game damage. You just sit here in your wall, pump out a bunch of SCVs, get a few extra Marines, and you're just going to be ahead. And he's going to use that little edge to get an early engineering bay to start his plus one upgrade as soon as possible. And so we're not going to see Light push out for quite some time. But he is going to have an extremely strong plus one timing. With this CC first, it's going to be so hard for Hero to potentially dive with Mutas and, and take a, a reasonable fight with them uh, against the Marines. Because there's just going to be so many... He's going to have so, so much to fight the early mutas. So maybe hanging back, maybe going for a quicker transition might be the play we see from Hero. He's going to move to take his third over at the uh, a one o'clock position. And as the Spire finishes up, how many mutas will he produce? 
We're going to try and go for a full clutch. Nine mutas right off the bat. Little communication here back and forth. From hero to light. See if he responds. Going into four racks now. And this does complement very well the engineering bay, the early engineering bay, the early plus one. Uh, doubling down on the power of the marine medic in the early game. Four mutas are on the way. So not a full complement here. Six now. Let's see when that hydralis den starts. A few turrets are going to get... Uh, Place down to over by the entrance near the barracks. Two in the main, one at the natural. The amount of money though that's coming in from this CC first, you can absolutely afford this. Afford to put down some extra turrets. Uh, afford to crank out marines and turrets and SCVs all at the same time flying in now to the main looking at these SCVs on the gas a factory is already done it's crazy how much you can do when you go for CC first added a ton of turrets four uh, racks and has the factory done with two storm ports on the way already it's scary man the, the CC first play is Kind of crazy with what you can get away with. Don't have range just yet. So he's not willing to push out for another few moments. Of course, plus one. Very important that that upgrade finishes as well. Okay, range. Just about done. There it is. Okay, range is uh, complete now. <clears throat> to try and chase these mutalists back, but only producing mutas and lings. Is Hero going to be able to overwhelm this Bioforce? Is that a, po a possibility? He has 11 mutas and plus one is getting close to completion. Diving now on a turret. The Marines are going to start to move. They hit the stim button and just start to move out in the middle of the map. What a few lings. Some extra mutas around as well. Is looking to overwhelm this. How are we doing on energy for these medics? a little low another bioforce here in the front getting into those star ports oh here comes the dive gonna dive right on top of this everything gonna get taken out aside from these uh, reinforcements coming up 11 mutalists still do remain pretty good dive for the first one the first go of it here for hero does get caught heading from right to left but Makes the most out of it and clears the remainder of the Marines. Very good control so far from Hero. This shouldn't really be a possibility. With the number of Marines that can get cranked out right now. You would imagine that a Hero would be overwhelmed in this early game. But he's doing a great job of clearing marines and taking himself a good position in this game he's actually going to start to clear out some missile turrets as well just until these Val Vol valkyries come in and then he needs to bail out Ooh, turning on the valkyries bit of a gamble play picks off one of them but he loses almost all the mutas and his uh lurker aspect upgrade is not done now i don't think that light has what it takes to push and break a sunken line right now so we can just make a few sunkens at each base and probably be okay but there's some downtime for the moment where light could push and lurkers not ready so sunkins are necessary one sunken at each base hardly enough to deal with these marines coming but maybe with the addition of a few mutas he's got a lot of scourge here ready to fight valkyries just in case there we go lurker upgrade finishes just now can light get in here in time i don't know if he keeps turning 
he's not going to make it there. But if he had just walked straight across the map, uh, after dealing so much damage with those Valkyries, he might have been able to get in there. Now it seems like he won't. And Hero will be safe. So Hero finding a bit of luck here. All his Lurkers are going to pop. And with the stacking, are going to be very hard to break through. Some overlords have been found in the top left hand corner. He's trying his best to get those overlord kills, but the Valkyries end up taking some damage from the Scourge. Nice. Micro. Pushing back the Scourge here. And more will be added on. There's the Defiler Mound. I think Hero is looking pretty good right now. Looking to be in a pretty decent situation. As long as he fends this drop appropriately, he should be able to get into a reasonable mid game. Ooh, diving on top of the drop. He gets one. Can he get the second? It's so important that he stops this. He gets it. That is so big. He lost all of his lurk or all of his uh, mutas, but. He prevents most of the Marines from getting out. Only two Marines make it into the main base. They kill like three or four drones. Pretty reasonable damage considering. But the Valkyries are going to end up getting taken down. Ooh, it's really close. The Valkyries are super low. So he will find them eventually here. There we go. It's one more shot. One more Scourge should finish that off. And he can re-drone while getting into a few defilers to just shore up the defense. Oh, one more shot. Looks like you will get it. Okay. Great job. Another double expansion now for Light. He's going to bring out that factory. I think we're going to see the exact same builds clash again in this game. Uh, just with the, the addition of the drop this game being the only large different factor the large changing factor marines are being defensive don't really think they can break through anywhere the science vessels are pretty late once again so the option of just chain irradiating defilers and lurkers and trying to break through is probably not going to work out for him When will he start to add more factories? When will he start plus one? Hasn't begun just yet. Crackling on the way. Let's take a look at the upgrades. Plus one armor is done. Plus one attack also done. Plus two halfway there. Plus two armor just begun here. So we're going to have a, a, a bit more leeway for uh, the Terran player. In terms of the upgrade advantage, he's going to have that for quite a bit longer than in game number one. But let's see what he can do to optimize that. What he can do to play off of it. Plague is ready. This is a big chunk of units. If he's able to get on top of this with a good plague. Could bring Hero into a good position. Has only a couple of lurkers here. Three lurkers, in fact. Where is the Dark Swarm? The Defiler just heading out on the map. And this Defiler will die for free. So this Dark Swarm runs out now. It's an, op an, an opening here that Light could have taken advantage of. But he's not going to from this position. Another factory starts. Second armory. He's actually building triple armory. Does he not remember that he built Valkyries earlier? Why do we have, why do we have triple armory? That's a little bit funny. Bit of a mistake here from Light, but there he cancels it. Realizing um, that he has this one ready to go. Going to start that upgrade immediately. One Defiler making its way over to this base. He's got to radiate that immediately. Okay, it looks like he won't be able to get the Dark Storm right on top of the bunker. Yeah, that's going to die just a moment too soon. And this Lurker is not going to really be able to do anything. What is over here to defend? I don't see anything. He's going after the Nidus. Lurkers pop out. Dark Swarm going to go down here. Just barely managing to survive for now. One vessel gets taken out. 
Ooh, these little counterattacks from Hero, although they are scary, leaving an opening in the defense is even scarier. He's got no Nidus at this base. He restarts one. But he's going to be reliant on whatever pops out of these eggs for the time being to actually hold this base. And I don't think that that's going to be enough. We've got some lings. We've got a pair of scourge. Where's the defiler? Where is the defiler right now? He doesn't have one. He just pops out uh, one more lurker, but it's not going to be enough. The nidus is not done. He targets down the nidus. And I think that Hero is about to get knocked out of this game. That snipe on the Nidus was so big. Taking away the Lurker and Defiler from this base. A huge mistake from Hero. And although he's going to... It looks like he's going to stay in. The amount of drones that are being lost right now. It is devastation. Absolutely devastating. This damage. A fourth base was about to come up. So we will have three gas once again here pretty soon. But... It's, it's not looking good, this drop. <laughs> this drop really not doing much. I guess the uh, fire bats might be able to clear everything. Um, some ultras did pop out. They're coming across the map. They're going to try and jump on top of the rally point. But three tanks pop out at pretty much the perfect moment here. To start to help clear out these ultras. They will end up getting uh, destroyed. But the fire bats are making... A lot of headway over at that fourth. And Queen is or Hero is just trying to send in everything he can, but it doesn't look to be enough. Another Dark Swarm potentially on top of some of these buildings. Maybe he can get a Dark Swarm down here and kill the factory or something. What is he gonna go for? Throws down a Dark Swarm. He's trying to get a Lurker into a good spot, but Lurker, it's been irradiated, will be killed. Hero just pumping out the small amounts of units that he can afford to make right now. They're just not doing too much against the uh, slowly swelling number of... Ooh, great plague there. Of uh, tanks that are being incremented out three at a time. Now there are six tanks ready to deal with these ultras coming in. And the small flow of ultras that's making its way across the map is just not going to make it... Just not going to be able to make any progress against these tanks. Especially once we get to 9, which is just in a few more seconds. There's really no way he's going to be able to break through those positions. And Ling's just running in against a bunch of bunkers. Also not a win winning formula. This base is under threat, running forward. He's just going to gun down the one lurker before it has time to shoot some spines. This base getting very, very low. Looks like just a couple of lings are going to be able to clear that in the end. But what are the chances that Hero can get that base online and operational long enough to benefit his army and bring him into a winning position? It is not looking good. Great. Plague there. Dealing a lot of damage to quite a few of these Marines, but it's a drop in the bucket. At this point for Light, who is vastly outweighing his opponent's supply. And the tank count is disturbingly high at this right now. 12 tanks are ready to take this next fight. As soon as he starts to move forward with those, we're just not going to have the muscle on the ground to take fights anymore. Hero is being shoved back. And Ultras are... Laying down their lives for very little return. Marines pushing forward. There's the Nidus just as it finishes up. Light will be here to try and take it down. He's targeting the Nidus, but he loses quite a bit uh, for that target. Now a dropship making its way over towards the third. Scourge are on top of it. Will he get anything out of this? Just two units pop out. And, I mean, a brilliant defense overall oh 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 my god oh my god this fire bat the three kills already k finally gets taken down looks like the night has fell to some battle cruisers battle cruisers are maybe the nail in the coffin for a hero nice job with the 
D Matrix is so powerful against these Ultras. Gonna come for that Plague, but the Hatchery is gonna fall. And with the Hatchery going down, I mean, back down to three gas. When the Terran is on four base and four gases, how are you ever going to uh, win a situation like that? Tell you there's got to be a lot of finesse right now from light or from from hero if he wants to bring this one back he needs to get this next base up and operational and he needs something to deal with all of these tanks there's a a full 80 supply advantage on the side of hero and there's so many fire bats pushing through the ling defiler defense is not going to cut it this base is falling and Hero is about to take this game. Oh, excuse me. Light is about to take this game. Hero will be tapping out in just a moment. Everything is falling apart. Depleted. This is just about to be depleted. This is his only truly mining gas. And a drop is coming into the main as well. To add insult to injury here. Going to be pulling Hero apart when he doesn't even have enough to fight at the front. He's going to have to take a fight here at the back of his main as well. He's not even going to go back there. Instead, just tapping out, leaving this game, and moving on to game number four. Okay, final game of the night. Hero spawning in the top left-hand corner, light in the bottom right. I'm feeling the triple factory play, man. It seems so strong. Really like it. Hero doesn't seem to know what exactly to do against it either. He took a bit of a gamble last game. And tried to pull his Defiler and Lurker from the third. Yeah, in order to assault the fourth of Light, but... Might have benefited from a bit more caution, just... Staying back and... Uh, chilling a little bit more, you know, waiting for some more units. Uh, waiting to, to get uh, more tech online before going for a play like that. He left a bit of an opening, and Light just broke him open at that third base. That was really the turning point there, was when uh, Light arrived at the third, and there was no Lurkers, no Dark Swarm, no Defiler uh, waiting for him. And although... You know, the Nidus is there, and you can pop through uh, with a quick target on the Nidus Canal. Your ability to hold that base just diminishes so completely, and unfortunately, Hero also didn't make another Defiler at that base. You know, if you throw down a Dark Swarm and then immediately make it a, another Defiler, um, you can pretty close... It's, it's not exact, but you can... Pretty much get another def that next defiler out, consume something, and drop another dark swarm just moments after that first dark swarm dissipates. So that's a way that you can, uh, it's like a timing that you can rely on uh, to make sure that you have dark swarm at all times, just to make sure that you uh, don't run out of dark swarm and you're not. Uh, just gonna get broken open like Hero did. Right as the Dark Storm gets thrown down, you immediately make another Defiler. And you should be okay. There's a tiny bit of a gap, but uh, it works a little bit better if you make a Defiler. And then, at, like, right as your Defiler or your first Defiler gets irradiated, you make another one. And then, when, just before your Defiler dies, you drop the Dark Storm. Then you'll definitely be covered you will be able to get another de Defiler out, uh, consume, and throw down another Dark Swarm before there is a gap. So, um, Hero, unfortunately, in that game, he wasn't prepared for it. He didn't have the Defiler ready. And, uh, you know, Light broke through. Now here, Light pushing in with just a single Marine. Taking advantage of the greed from Hero. Nothing else to say about that. It's just pure greed right now, not having any lings. He finally pops out a pair. He's going to split one ling to go chase this marine, one ling to chase the SCV, but 
Uh, oh, he gets another drone. That is so big. Two drones here for just the first marine. Oof. This single marine play is not supposed to get any damage at all. The maximum you're supposed to get with this is just to force the drones from the natural away for a moment. But every now and then, the Zerg player will get a little bit greedy and then lose, you know, two drones because they didn't want to make four lings at the early game or even two lings right as this pool finishes. Yeah, hate to see it. Now Hero in a bit of a disadvantage. Can't afford a third hatch, although that's not really been the play he's he's going for in this series. Uh, he certainly can't afford it in this game. He's just got his Spire going. He's got his second gas. A few more links popping out now. As Link Speed finishes, it looks like he's going to look for a play onto some sort of push out that might be coming from light but back at home light has plus one on the way so it's unlikely that he'll he'll push out at the regular time yeah hero is really expecting this he's expecting a big light uh two racks push as the medics pop out like eight marines two medics ten marines two medics something like that to push out and um four sunkins and he wants to just crush that and um, follow up with Mutas. But look, there's no reason for Light to move out right now. He doesn't have Stim finished. Plus one is halfway done. If he just sits here and does nothing, uh, Hero is, is going to die. He really doesn't have a choice. Yeah, Light's just going to stay. Light's just going to sit and wait. The Hero's mi misread this. Oh boy, he's actually going to move out. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. I can't believe he's thinking about moving out right now. Hero is waiting for it. Uh, he wants to take this fight. Here we go. Okay, he's going to pull the trigger. Running in right now. Lings are going to get ahead of these Marines. Getting on top of the Marines now. Pretty good splitting from Light. Dealing as much damage as he can. And wow, these Marines at the back are living forever. And the Lings just get destroyed that was kind of insane actually how many kills did those marines get they took such a good trade uh, in comparison to what i thought they would be able to one mutilus goes down but the turret falls as well this is a true momentum play here from hero he needed the momentum of killing all of those marines with his early lings to allow the mutilus to get in and get on top of the top of the barracks so that he could continue to flood lings and mutas to eventually overwhelm here but because the lings took such a bad trade against those marines despite getting in amongst them just not able to trade appropriately and now there's no momentum here for hero he's pretty much at a dead stop trying to make something happen with these mutas uh, it's just such a hard proposition. There's so many turrets coming down because Light realizes the position that he's in and that he's got more than double the drone count, the worker count of his opponent coming in for another poke here. I mean, it's it's a desperate situation for, for Hero. He really doesn't have much he can do in this game anymore. He's trying to take fights with these... These Marines just pick off as many as he can. He's going to dive on the Marines, but reinforcements come up here and only six Mutilus left. He's going to target down one by one each of these Marines. He does kill them all and has four Mutilus remaining, but he's not dealing any damage to the economy and he can't because there are too many turrets. Just not enough Mutilus being incremented out. Some extra gas has been accumulated here for Hero, but he can't even spend it right now. He just has so few drones to, to do anything with, and another Supply Depot at the front. You can just tell. Light knows exactly what position he's in. As I said before, building the Supply Depot at the front is just a, a, just a chef's kiss here at the end of this game. Like You cannot get in 
No Lings are going to be able to run by here to try and assist the Mutalis on taking down any of these turrets. He can slow down the starports all he wants, but this one over here is going to finish and Valkyries will be on the way shortly. Uh, even just pure Marine is eventually going to be able to overwhelm these Mutas and Hero really doesn't have many options left. He's still trying to play around uh, with the 5 Muta. The one shot on the Marine is still pretty good, but... He backs away, even with plus one, can't really make anything happen. Another scan we just saw in the natural revealing the depth of the difficult situation that Hero is in right now and another supply depot out in the front so that he has enough to pump out just a few Valkyries is really all he needs, like two Valkyries. Maybe even when the first Valkyrie comes out, we might see Hero tap because that's just too much to handle 11 mutas here but two valkyries about to finish i'm gonna fly into the main once again cannot make any progress with lings there at the front there's the first valkyrie it does the damage it forces back the mutas all of them are likely to die here yeah he takes this last fight as best he can but gg is called hero taps out light takes another Sweet, sweet victory here. Man. I'm really liking his play right now. He's looking incredibly strong, especially with the triple factory. You don't see it that much. It's considered very good against Hydralis Defiler, but... It, it actually adds like another layer to the difficulty of TVZ when a Terran player can play like that. When they have that in their back pocket, that is an option for them that they don't have to deal damage to you. Even though they have complete map control and they can try to deal damage to you, but they don't actually have to deal that damage. They have this nest egg that they're sitting on, the triple factory with double upgrades coming or even single upgrades for attack on the... Uh, tanks uh, as like a trump card in their back pocket it's just slowly building up behind that so it puts a timer kind of on the zerg player to get out and get a fourth base and maybe even get a fifth base so that they can compete in the the late stages of the game but um Terran, i mean they can still do a little damage they can look for openings but they don't have to deal damage when they have that uh, triple factory play incoming guys thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed this series if you did make sure to hit the subscribe button we're gonna be checking out a lot more games like this from the ladder and from different tournaments coming up very soon thank you so much for watching see you tomorrow